it can cause apnea or pauses in their breathing. As you can imagine, this could be really scary. Let's get one thing straight. RSV in infants eh, can show up like regular cold symptoms. However, it can turn into something much more scary. Like for example, going to the emergency room, being hospitalized, or even that thing I don't wanna mention. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how RSV enters the body. And then at the end, I'm gonna mention a couple of medications, especially one that just came out, which could protect the babies and decrease the risk of really severe RSV. RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus. It is a common respiratory virus that can affect people of all ages. But I'm gonna focus obviously on the newborns and the young children, because that's really what I do. Now, let's talk some nerves. Uh, respiratory syncytial virus belongs to the genus pneumovirus and the family of paramyxoviridae. Mm, it is a single-stranded RNA virus uh, that also is protected by an envelope. So RSV typically shows up with cold-like symptoms like runny nose, coughing, sneezing, and even fever. But in babies, infants, or people who have low immune system, it can actually lead to severe respiratory infections. RSV can enter the human body through respiratory secretions. It actually occurs through inhalation or breathing it in, or it can actually occur through direct contact and again, touching the face of those areas. When an infected person coughs, sneezes, or may even talk, tiny little droplets of viruses can be released into the air. If you inhale these droplets, then it enters through your nose, through your mouth, straight into the respiratory system. If it enters through direct contact, it does so, it does so with infected respiratory secretions, for example, if a parent touches a surface that's contaminated with the virus and then touches the baby's face, the virus can then enter through the eyes, nose, and mouth like I mentioned. Once RSV enters the body, it begins to infect the cells that line the airways in your respiratory system, causing various respiratory symptoms. It primarily affects the lungs and can lead to illness like bronchiolitis or pneumonia, especially in those young children or older adults. Hey, do me one favor. If you're enjoying this, if you like this type of content, go ahead and tickle that like button. It tells me that I should make more videos like this. All right, let's jump in. Now, one of the things that can make RSV a silent threat to infants is that especially for those infants that are less than six months, especially four months, it can cause apnea or pauses in their breathing. As you can imagine, this can be really scary. What it can cause is that it elevates the CO2 and then the oxygen in that baby will drop and so it causes them to be severely ill and can even die. Approximately 100 to 200,000 babies die every year around the world due to RSV. It is not to be taken lightly. What can we do to protect the infants from this virus? Here are a few things that we can do to prevent RSV from spreading and getting infected. Number one, freaking hand washing. Encourage everybody around the baby to wash their hands regularly, especially before touching and after touching or holding an infant. Number two, limit exposure. Try to keep the baby away from people who are sick or who have symptoms of respiratory infection. Number three, keep a clean environment. Regularly clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces, for example, toys, doorknobs, or countertops. Number four, Avoid crowded places. During RSV season, typically winter to early spring, avoid crowded areas where your baby can come into contact with a lot of people, and some of those could actually be carrying RSV. Number five, cover your coughs and sneezes. Encourage those around you and around the baby to cover their mouth and nose with a tissue or even with their elbow as they are coughing or sneezing. Number six, do not smoke. Avoid smoking around your baby. Exposure to secondhand smoke can increase the risk of respiratory infections. Number seven, breastfeeding. If possible, breastfeed your baby. Breast milk contains antibodies that can help protect against respiratory infections as well as other infections. Remember, if you do notice any concerning symptoms such as fever or difficulty breathing, it is important to contact your healthcare provider or pediatrician. Okay, I said at the end, I would tell you about two different medications that we can use to combat RSV. So first, there is a new vaccine that can be given during pregnancy that helps to decrease the risk of RSV in newborns and infants and partially protects her by providing temporary immunity to the mother, which is then passed through the placenta to the baby, providing some level of protection against RSV during the first few months of life, which is really when they're at the highest risk for getting more severe symptoms. As I mentioned before, there are two drugs that can be used for babies, 
and they are commonly described as vaccines, but they are not, they're also antibodies. What this means is that they help to cover the virus and assist in eliminating it from the body. Now we have two types of antibodies to fight infection. One is called palivisumab and the other one is called nirsevimab. Commercially, they're known as Synergis and Bayfortis respectively. Now, palimisumab is only recommended for infants who are at highest risk of severe RSV, such as your premature infant born be before 29 weeks of gestation and infants with certain heart or lung conditions and also those that have weakened immune systems. The newer antibody in their sevimab can be given to all infants less than one year of age who are born within or they're entering their first season of RSV. Now, if you want to know more about these drugs, go ahead and click the videos that are going to appear right next to me so you can learn more about RSV and some of these other drugs. That's it for me today. I'm signing out. Hopefully this helped you and we'll see you with the next video.